Hi there, welcome to this build blog of the Model L. Now this is a really nice design by Peter Fisher from 1973. And I recently uploaded the plans to Outer Zone, to the, uh, the, the plan site, and if you want to download them free of charge, you can do. They're a really nice set of plans. Now, this is an update to have a look at kind of the covering and setting out the tailplane. You can see, if I just lift this up, we've, we've, I've been covering this in uh, uh, laminating film and then a pure silk. And that's gone on really, really nice. You can see how well that's looking. It's still got a little bit of a sheen to it because you can see the film underneath the silk. But that will go as soon as I do the final coat of polyurethane, which I don't want to do until I've got the decal on. Now I've more or less finished doing the covering. I've got the, the wings stowed away, I've shown those before. I've got the tail plane, which I've done now, and the elevator hinged. See, I've just used Dubro small hinges there and just pegged them. And that's gone really nice, it stayed lovely and flat and true, which I'm really pleased about. Now, the only things that I've got left to cover is the rudder and a small bit of the fin that goes, because you can see this is a raised tail plane, and then a small bit of the fin that just goes on top like that. Now, I haven't done either of these because I want to get the tail plane mounted so that I can be absolutely sure that these are the right shape and I get the flow of the back of the fuselage coming round and I've got the nice shape coming up from the, the lower half of the fin. So this kind of all meets and the, the rudder is the same height as the fin. If I cover them now, I'm sure I'll find I need to sand a bit off or something. So we'll leave those till last. Now in this video, I thought it'd be worth having a look at how I'm going to glue this on, because that is the next job. Now, there is, there's, there's probably only one job that makes me feel anxious when I'm building. Actually, there's probably two. Uh, one of them is, is when I'm actually joining wings together, and the other one is when I'm gluing on the tailplane. Because if we get it wrong, either of those two jobs, it, it can be a little bit tricky to put right. Most jobs whatever they are I kind of think balsa it's lovely to work with if I make a mistake I can stick a bit on sand it cut a bit out do you know whatever to make it right but once you've glued that on with epoxy it's it's not going to come off easy without making a mess of everything so we need to make sure this is set up right and we glue it just right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this up and I'll move the camera around and I'll show you how I'm going to do that to make sure we get it absolutely spot on. Right, well the first thing I've done is I've put the wings on, made sure they're exactly where they need to be uh, or, or they're going to be in the finished model, make sure they're on in the right place is what I'm saying. I've propped up the back of the fuselage and I've made sure that this uh, seat here that the tailplane is going to sit on is level forward to backwards so if I put a spirit level on that I can see the bubble is just right so that's good now I have put some weights at the front just to stop this moving backwards and forwards and what I want to do now is I'm going to take two kind of measurements if you like to make sure that this tailplane is in the right position so we need to make sure it's square that way and we need to make sure that it's correct that way. Now, I'm, I don't care about how it looks on the fuselage now. I'm not worried about that. What I want to do is make sure that it looks correct in relation to the wings. So if I go down the front of the model and I look back at the nose of the model and eye up the wings and the tailplane, the gap between the wing and the tailplane is the same both sides so essentially I mean I know there's a dihedral in the in the wing but essentially so the front wing is going to sit parallel with the back wing and the best way to do that uh, is and this is how I always do it is to go to the front and we'll have a look at that once we've got it set up and just make sure that they look parallel setting it up by eye I find is much more accurate 
and I've also got these lifts whoops which I got uh, which I've made and I've used before it's a, a t-pin that I can slide up and down in that piece of balsa and I've just put them on a couple of things to lift them up and what I'm going to do is once I've got this in the right position I'm going to make sure that those t-pins are just touching the underside on either side just to make sure that it doesn't tilt or drift while I'm gluing it. I'm going to put 30 minute epoxy on there and I will probably once I've got the tail plane on just put a little bit of weight on either side but I'll, I'll see how that goes. Now I've had this tail plane on before and you can see I've got three 2mm carbon fibre rods and this will just slot onto those and they just stick proud a few mil, five mil, something like that on uh, above the tail plane so that I can then use them to hold the, uh, the last bit of the fin. So I think, oh, and there's one, there's one other thing which is uh, just as crucial. I've got a piece of this builder's line which doesn't stretch, which is all tangled up, which it wasn't a minute ago <laughs> but it's really nice bright builders line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to here we go so I'm going to put that on a pin I've got at the front in the center and when the tail plane is on like this what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from this corner let's just bring that in I'm going to measure from the corner inside the uh, elevator bay and I'm going to do that on either side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that to here and then I'm going to come across and bring that to there and that will just tell me whether I need to move it either way to get it absolutely square on the uh, on the plane so I will get I'm going to dry have a dry run with this first before I put the glue on and make sure I'm happy with how it is and I know what I'm doing Okay, so I've got this all set up now and I am so glad that I've done this as a dry run because there were a few things I realised like I needed to support the back better if I was going to put a weight on. Um, just getting the pins right and if I'd already put epoxy on that I think I would have, oh, I don't know, I would have panicked. <laughs> but it's all looking really good now. And if we take a look at the front you can see what I mean about making the tail plane level with the wings and how the tips of the wings here just line up with the uh, with the front of the wing and having made sure that the tail plane is nice and parallel I've then made sure that as I said it's square kind of that way with the wings and like I said I've got a pin in the front here and I've just get the string pull it sort of to tension it. it it is very little stretch this it's builders line I said and I just take it to the corner of that elevator bay and I bring it across and that lines up perfectly so we are ready to glue this on I mean I, I have lined this up before when I put the pegs in but it's obviously something that needs checking um, when you've got the setup complete so I'm ready now to get the epoxy on and I'm going to use 30 minute epoxy so it gives me plenty of time to make sure I've got this back in the right place and once that's all glued up we'll come back and we'll have a look at, uh, at the finished article right well I've now got this glued and as you can see I've probably put a bit more weight on than I was planning to but as long as it's supported on the underside here and it's not pushing it down so you end up with the pressure on the tips of the tail plane that'll be fine it'll just make sure we get a really nice uh, sort of mating surface now I put on the epoxy and it literally put, took me a couple of minutes to just put this on so we've got what 25 minutes probably for that epoxy before it starts to go hard and a little bit ran out not much just a little bit on the underside and I mean I think that is a good thing where it just starts to ooze out and what I've done is I've used my torch wherever I put it uh, here it is I use my torch and I've just 
looked at that joint and I've just gone along with a, a stick with a little bit of an angle on it and, uh, and just gone along that seam to make sure that there's not too much and it's not going to run down the covering, um, which it's not. That looks perfect now. But I will check um, in a while because 25 minutes, a little bit more, could ooze out and start to run down, which we really don't want. And another good reason not to have done the top coat of the finish, the polyurethane that I'm using, is because I will poly polyurethane the joint and if there is any shiny epoxy just on that joint it will mat it down because I'm using a matte epoxy and you won't see it. But to be honest it's under the tail anyway so you, you probably you, you won't see it anyway. So anyway, we'll have a look once it's done or once it's cured. Right, well, the epoxy is cured now. It's uh, definitely gone off. So, time to deconstruct this uh, elaborate setup and, uh, and see what it looks like. I always find this dead exciting and I don't feel nervous about it or anything because I feel that, you know, the preparation and that uh, set it up right. You see there's no movement there as I take out the supports, uh, which of course there shouldn't be. I had to prop up the one leg of the landing gear because the landing gear is just slightly asymmetrical. But there we go. Now that is looking sweet. That is really nice. And, uh, and I don't know whether if I line that up you can see it's uh, lovely and parallel with the uh, with the wing. It's always hard for me to try and line that up but anyway and if we turn it over you can see on the underside there's just a bead perhaps of epoxy that's oozed out very slightly uh, which I'm quite pleased about because it shows I've got quite a nice joint and hopefully that little bit of epoxy coming out will make it uh, make it fuel proof or uh, at least help and uh, now We've got the fin to add on top, and we've got the, uh, so we'll do the fin first, and then I will hinge the rudder. And then the covering's finished, and we just need to, uh, to pull it together. Well, I'm gonna pull this video to a close now for this update, and uh, we'll come back at some point with the whole of the setting up once I've got the, uh, these installed and some of the linkages and, uh, and we'll have a look at the finished model I think probably in the next video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this update and a little bit of information about how I do the tailplane. But I'm really pleased with that and it doesn't wobble at all. I mean it does wobble but it's a whole, a whole plane that's wobbling really. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it interesting and useful.